how's it going? Thanks so much for tuning in. You know, my favorite thing about this channel is the wide variety of vehicles I've been able to bring you guys from the high-priced exotics to the normal everyday cars and everything in between. Every now and then though, we get to check out something a little bit different. Take this 2015 Juke Nismo RS provided to us by Nissan for a whole week of testing. Of course, you guys know I love filming off the wall stuff, so this pretty much checks all of those boxes. Is it different? Yes. Quirky? Of course. Polarizing? Definitely. As always, guys, this is going to be a detailed, in-depth review of the Juke Nismo RS. We'll start it up, show the engine, get an exhaust clip, and go to the performance data, taking on a thorough road test, and show you many of the unique aspects of both the interior as well as exterior. And so, without further ado, let's go ahead and hop on in, start it up, and let it run. Nissan's Intelligent Key System comes standard, so as long as you keep the key fob in your pocket, you're able to look at the black buttons on the driver and passenger side door to unlock the vehicle. To lock, just tap the button once, it beeps twice, then after waiting a second, go ahead and tap it again. It beeps once to let you know it's unlocked. The Juke Nismo and Nismo RS are only available in three colors, Super Black, White Pearl, and Brilliant Silver, with red exterior highlighting. Inside the RS, you'll find a set of Recaro seats up front, trimmed in red and black leather with suede midsections. In order to start, you want to make sure you have the key fob within the interior, put your foot on the brake and clutch, and then hit the red highlighted starter button in the dash to go. In addition to a unique instrument cluster that combines a red tachometer and Nismo RS logos, the Juke features vehicle speed sensing electric power assist steering tuned for the RS to deliver tighter feel with more feedback and direct handling. The overall ratio is 16.5 to 1, it takes 2.76 turns to lock, and has a 36.4 foot turning diameter. I like the added resistance in the wheel, it makes the RS feel sporty. Response to inputs were impressive, making the car feel very agile despite the higher ground clearance compared to other compact performance cars. The three-spoke multifunction wheel doesn't differ from your standard juke, but it's trimmed in a combination of leather and Alcantara, featuring a red accent band at the top to indicate top dead center and grit bolsters at 10 and 2. The Nismo RS is available with an excellent 6-speed manual or a CVT automatic depending on whether you opt for front-wheel drive or all-wheel drive respectively. A manual all-wheel drive combo isn't offered. When equipped with the manual, which is different from the 6-speed found in the non-RS Nismo, you not only benefit from higher engine output compared to the CVT-equipped cars, which we'll cover later on, but you also receive a helical geared limited slip differential, which not only works to mitigate torque steer, but it directs more power to the front wheel with the most traction during cornering. The RS 6-speed features a dual-mass flywheel and strengthened clutch cover. It also has shorter gearing in the first, second, and third gears, not to mention a shorter overall final drive of 4.428 to 1, compared to 3.933 to 1 in the non-RS Nismo for livelier acceleration off the line. The manual is an absolute joy to drive. It's precise, has a relatively light clutch, and gives satisfying feedback through the gate with subtle clinks. The CVT would not be my first choice as the manual is very easy to drive and get used to, but it does offer paddle shifters and 8 simulated gears so you do have a bit of manual control along with the added benefit of torque vectoring from the all-wheel drive system. In addition to the Nismo badge just ahead of the gear selector, the RS also has this faux carbon effect trim on the leather wrap knob in addition to the red accent stitching. 
Also standard is an around view camera system. When you put the vehicle in reverse, a backup camera appears in addition to the top down view with adaptive guidance lines. But if you hit the camera button in the infotainment system, it activates your front view camera and you can toggle between your top down as well as a corner view for close parking. Another little piece of tech I wanted to highlight real quick is the Juke's ICON system which stands for Integrated Control. It combines both the climate and drive mode settings within an easy to understand and use central control panel. By just pushing one of the buttons it basically transforms the majority of the buttons to correspond to whatever respective mode that you pressed. In the drive modes for example you have normal, sport and eco. Sport firms up the steering a bit, makes the throttle a little bit more responsive. Eco kind of makes everything a little bit more relaxed and of course normal is your day to day modes. The display also changes with the drive mode, so in normal you have a voltometer and instantaneous torque meter, sport has a boost pressure and eco has well an eco gauge. Off to the right hand side you have a setup screen for customizing various aspects, driver information including a lateral g-force meter as well as an eco meter. You'll also notice instead of fan speed the right knob in the drive mode screen doubles as a rotary controller and enter button. For me it was a little hard to enjoy all the interactive menus while driving because it does sit a little low in the dash unlike the infotainment system which has pretty good line of sight with the instrument cluster. So let's go ahead and flip on the projector headlamps and the hazards. The driver's side window is fully automatic. Now let's go ahead and check out the exterior. Upon closing the door, the vehicle will chime a few times to let you know it's lost detection of the proximity key fob. The Juke was initially launched as an all new model for 2011. Its controversial styling is often the subject of internet debates as either a love it or hate it kind of thing. I've always been one of those who thought the Juke was a pretty cool little crossover, available in three trim levels, Base S, Midrange SV, and the luxurious SL. Sure, it sacrifices a little practicality for style, but you gotta hand it to Nissan for daring to be different. One thing's for sure, this thing is radical. It makes quite a statement as it doesn't look like anything else out there. With desires to take Juke to the next level, Nissan's Motorsports division created two additional trim levels, including the Juke Nismo back in 2013 and the Nismo RS in 2014. As expected, the RS is the range topping model designed to combine greater performance thresholds with genuine racing elements that's tailored more towards the driving enthusiast. It includes its own unique engine, suspension, steering, and brake tuning. About the only thing it really shares with the non-RS Nismo is the track-inspired styling, which subsequently improves downforce by 37%. The wealth of handling and performance enhancements create the most dynamic and spirited package ever offered on a production juke. The body underwent significant changes to yield a purpose-driven design, one that was far more in your face than a standard juke. To me, this is the best looking juke ever if you don't count that crazy GTR powered juke R. All of the funky styling bits work together in perfect unison, almost as if it were meant to look this way from the get-go. Of course, this is one of those situations where I believe it's only fully appreciated in person. Up front, the fascia and grille have been modified to allow for improved control of airflow to the engine. The front end is lower and more aggressive, incorporating a thin strip of LEDs to replace the Juke's integrated fog lights. The strip is positioned at the top edge of a small set of vents on either side of the larger lower grille opening. One of the most defining cues is a thin red pinstripe which extends across the lower grille before dropping to curve around the smaller vents, wrapping around the edges and tapering off at the wheel arches. It adds more visual width and further accentuates the vehicle's lower stance along with the dark grey lower cladding. 2015 Jukes received an updated version of Nissan's signature V-Strut grille, featuring darker tinted chrome trim on the Nismo with unique badging off to the right side. The polarizing headlamp configuration also sees a smoked effect for a more sinister look. Across the sides, the lower Nismo stance is further highlighted by more muscular wheel arches that, unlike the standard Juke, are painted to match the exterior. The side skirts are more aggressively sculpted for enhanced aerodynamics and continuation of the pinstripe. They help direct airflow around the rear wheels and away from the car to reduce turbulence and drag. You'll also notice the mirrors are painted red to match the pinstripe and gloss black B pillars replace the standard flat black pillars. At the rear, the bumper is deeper and incorporates a prominent diffuser. Of course, the pinstripe wraps around, tying everything together, while the modified spoiler up top adds icing to the cake. The RS receives additional body and chassis reinforcements to help overall rigidity. Along with that, the steering and suspension have been tuned to make the vehicle more agile without compromising on ride comfort. Like the non-RS Nismo, the suspension has been lowered slightly, reducing the wheel well gaps for a cleaner appearance and improved aerodynamics. 
Both the Juke Nismo and Nismo RS feature a unique set of diamond cut 10 spoke 18 by 7 inch aluminum alloy wheels. They're finished in dark anthracite which is almost a bluish gray hue. The wheels are 1 inch larger than the standard Jukes and wrapped in 225-45 Continental Summer Performance tires that help deliver .88 g of lateral acceleration. The RS begins to differentiate itself further with a unique braking package. Compared to the standard brakes, the ventilated front discs are larger while the solid rear discs were replaced with slightly wider ventilated discs. They measure 12.6 inches in front and 11.5 inches in the rear, with the upgraded brake pads at all four corners. The red calipers are an RS signature. With this setup, the RS can be brought to a stop from 60 miles an hour in about 114 feet. As far as the suspension, up front there's a Nismo tuned independent McPherson strut setup that's paired with a cradle type subframe for enhanced lateral stiffness of the assembly. The rear depends on the drivetrain. Front wheel drive models have a torsion bar while all wheel drive models receive a multi-link design. Front and rear stabilizer bars are included on both the Nismo and Nismo RS. Surprisingly, the RS rides pretty well despite its added stiffness. In fact, it's pretty smooth overall. I liked how well controlled the suspension remained over a variety of surfaces. It did a pretty good job filtering out impacts while delivering an appropriate level of feedback. Noise, vibrations, and harshness are kept to a bare minimum. Overall length is 163.8 inches with a width of 69.7 inches and a height of 61.8 inches riding on a 99.6 inch wheelbase. Total curb weight for our testers is around 2,969 pounds. The Nismo RS is the most potent juke available to the mass public. Powered by a modified version of the all-aluminum turbocharged and intercooled 1.6 liter 4 cylinder that's also equipped in the juke Nismo, itself modified a bit over the standard juke. In addition to remapped ECU settings and a higher flow sport exhaust system, the RS also benefits from strengthened connecting rods to handle the added torque when equipped at the manual gearbox. It also features double overhead cams, four valves per cylinder, dual variable valve timing, and direct fuel injection. Compression ratio is rated at 9.5 to 1 with a maximum engine speed of 6,400 RPM. Our tester develops 215 horsepower at 6,000 RPM and 210 pound-feet of torque between 3,600 and 4,800 RPM, delivered by 16 PSI of boost. That's an increase of 18 horsepower and 26 pound-feet of torque over the Juke Nismo. This allows the RS to accelerate to 60 miles an hour in an estimated 6.5 seconds up to an electronically limited top speed of 135 miles an hour. Living with the Juke for a week, I learned just how much fun this thing was. Power is excellent for the class with only minor turbo lag under harder acceleration. The RS is a dedicated performance vehicle that's easy to drive and unobtrusive. The sport exhaust also adds a lot to the experience. I was hoping it would be just a little bit louder, but it's very enjoyable nonetheless, especially compared to the standard Juke. When the all-wheel drive CVT combo is ordered for the RS, output actually drops to 211 horsepower and 184 pound-feet of torque due to the limited threshold of the Xtronic gearbox. The front-wheel drive Juke also carries a larger 13.2 gallon tank compared to the all-wheel drive version, which shrinks capacity to 11.8 gallons. EPA estimates for the RS front-wheel drive range between 25 miles to a gallon in the city and 31 on the highway while running on required premium fuel. The general styling, build quality, and features of the Juke's interior hasn't changed much since 2011 aside from infotainment and equipment updates over the last couple of years. The environment conveys a lot of emotion, blending cool styling touches that pair nicely with the expressive exterior. There is more use of harder plastics when compared to some of the more recently updated competition, but despite this, it still feels like a very solid vehicle. The front doors incorporate a healthy dose of padding across the middle in addition to the option of a padded center console for added comfort. Your power windows and locks are located on the door in addition to a practical storage bin towards the bottom. Where the real differences come into play between our tester and your standard Juke are the exclusive Nismo appointments, especially with the racing inspired Nismo RS which comes fully loaded. Compared to the comfortable sports seats of the Nismo, the Nismo RS goes full race car with downright aggressive Recaro front seats, wrapped in a combination of red and black leather with black suede center inserts. The seats are based on the Recaro Sportster design and offers an immense amount of lateral support, a flared upper backrest for added shoulder support, and a fixed headrest. They're manually adjustable with the driver's seat offering height adjustment. They weren't the easiest to work around in daily driving as it takes careful maneuvering to slide in and out over the rigid outer bolsters, but once seated they were relatively comfortable and very supportive, conforming to my body nicely. 
There isn't any additional lumbar, but there's a pretty good amount already built in. They also have great attention to detail. I love the accent stitching and rib middle section, not to mention the racing harness ports in the upper backrest. Aside from the logoed floor mats, steering wheel, instrument cluster, and center stack treatment, other unique Nismo touches include the dark gray metallic painted portions across the doors and center console, which is otherwise customizable in the standard juke. The hood above the speedometer cluster is wrapped in suede with the double accent red stitching. The steering wheel is manually tilting telescoping. So let's go ahead and see if she sounds. So let's go ahead and shut her up. The Nismo RS features a standard 290 watt 7 speaker Rockford Fosgate Eco Punch Premium audio system, including an 8 inch rear mounted subwoofer. It delivers crisp highs and impressively deep lows and is one of the best sounding setups I've heard in this class. All routed right through the Nissan Connect navigation and infotainment system with 5.8 inch touchscreen. Side curtain airbags, padded visors with auxiliary sunshade off to the far right, and a vanity mirror. The rear view mirror is manually dimming, and up top, you have your reading lamps, interior illumination, as well as a hands free Bluetooth microphone. The infotainment system available for the regular Juke is actually really easy to use. I don't believe it's quite as modern as some of Nissan's latest products, but that doesn't even really matter. I mean, you have easy to see buttons to either side, large icons within the touchscreen portion. It's very simple, it's not complicated, so it's very easy to pick up on. You have your radio modes up top here, standard Sirius XM satellite radio, preset stations, all of the artist song station information. You can pause, rewind, repeat live radio, setup categories and other typical um, satellite radio features, AM, FM, manual tune, and again, your presets. CD, auxiliary, the in-dash CD player up top here, you have an SD card slot off to the top right. Hitting nav brings up your destination entry, two pages of menus, and your map. Top right hand corner, you have a section for apps, a little bit customizable, online search, trip advisor, Sirius XM traffic, so real-time traffic updates, voice commands, and settings for the system. Your hands-free Bluetooth telephone, you can automatically pair it, store contacts, voice dial, and the like. You can adjust the brightness here, rewind, fast forward, seek, change track, things like that, and back, and a little rotary dial here for tune, track selection, or if you push in, you can adjust your audio settings. All in all, it's a pretty quick overview of the Nissan Connect system and the 2015 Juke Nismo RS. We talked about this a little bit earlier in the video, but down beneath the infotainment system, you have the Juke's icon system. Basically, it allows you to adapt this bank of controls between your climate and drive modes. So, just hitting that up there, it adapts all of the buttons correspondingly. Regardless of whether you're in, well, climate or drive modes, you still have your temperature adjustment and one-touch automatic there, front and rear defrost, vent and recycling, but to get the full climate control, you have to hit climate. AC, different zones, fan speed off to the far right. Down in the very bottom you have a small storage tray, a 12 volt power outlet, as well as your auxiliary and USB integration. While many of the interior trim pieces are actually customizable in the standard Juke, in the Nismo RS it has this dark gray metallic finish like I showed you earlier, so it kind of continues that theme throughout with a high gloss fashion. It looks pretty nice. In the middle you have two cup holders, traditional emergency brake and this optional center console. It does open up to storage and has double accent stitching with the Alcantara portions up top. 
As far as the steering wheel on the right hand side, you have your cruise control. The left hand side houses all of your radio controls, hands free telephone, and voice commands. The speedometer cluster, like I showed you earlier, is unique to the Nismo RS. It has this red tachometer portion off to the left, and there's a little driver information system up top. Alrighty. We'll go ahead and shut her down. And check out the back seat. Like we talked about earlier, I mean, the Juke, I think, is a little bit more of a niche product, or at least this particular model is. And with all Jukes of the past few years, the back seat is pretty cramped for taller people. I mean, I'm 5'10", and with a comfortable seating position for myself in front, I probably have about a half to an inch of leg space, depending on where I put them. And my head is just barely grazing the headliner back here. So, depending on how tall you are, I wouldn't recommend people of my height and taller to sit back here. Um, maybe five and a half feet and shorter would be a little bit more comfortable. Um, build quality is pretty good. The materials aren't anything to write home about, just like the front. I mean, you don't have any soft touch material across these doors at all. Um, you do have some of the high gloss plastic trim back here that gives a little bit more of a sporty aspect to it. I like the chrome door handles, but what I'm most impressed of back here is the comfort. I mean, despite the overall dimensions, the back seat is really rather comfortable. They're wrapped in this um, suede cloth type material. I get, I don't, I wouldn't really call it Alcantara necessarily, um, or maybe you would. I don't know. But you do have double accent red stitching back here, just like you have in the front. So the theme kind of continues as well. And they're rather supportive. There's a lot of lower back support back here. And I, I'm, it's, it's nice. <laughs> um, good padding down below, good padding up top. Not much in terms of lateral support. You don't have a armrest in the middle right here. But as far as just basic transportation for backseat passengers, it's more than adequate. Um, you can sit three people back here. There is an extra um, seat belt. It may be a little bit cramped. I mean, I imagine it would be cramped, especially if you're trying to fit um, three people my size back here just because of um, shoulder width. But really, that's that's about it. There's not much else in terms of um, features except for grip handles up top, coat hooks. Of course, you got side curtain airbags. There's no extra air vents back here, but it's such a small and intimate cabin. I don't see that being a big deal at all. And I imagine the visibility is pretty decent as well. Um, the headrests don't impede back here that I can tell that much. Um, the C-pillar is decent, but I haven't really found a fault with it um, so far in the times that I've driven it. Each door panel also has a water bottle holder, so it is a little bit tight back here, but surprisingly comfortable. So, let's go and check out the rest of the vehicle. Out back, the Juke trades a little practicality for added style, so the sharp rake of the roofline impedes on the overall usability. As expected, the hatch does have its inherent practicality advantage when it comes to loading items. Behind the rear seat, there's 10.5 cubic feet of cargo space. Folding down the rear seat allows you to extend usable area all the way to the front seats, effectively tripling the total space to 35.9 cubic feet. While it wouldn't be the best family vehicle in my eyes, it's more than enough for one or two people who occasionally carry rear seat passengers. One of the neatest things though is if you lift up the trunk floor, there's actually a storage compartment that you can lift out to reveal your spare tire. As you saw, all of your jacking equipment is also located within that storage bin. The passenger seat is also manually adjusting, but it doesn't have the extra height adjustment like you find on the driver's seat. Down below you actually have a pretty decent sized glove box. It's not logging, but 
very cavernous. While the Juke isn't for everyone, I for one think it's one of the most unique and fun offerings in the small crossover segment, especially with the Nismo and Nismo RS. If you're looking for something that strays from the norm, puts a priority on style, and delivers plenty of driving fun, then the Juke Nismo is well worth checking out. Well everyone, I hope you enjoyed the in-depth look at the 2015 Nissan Juke Nismo RS. Be sure to stay tuned next time, there's a lot more where that came from. Take care everybody.